Hello, this is Bob McClellan. This screencast is the fifth in a series about Spreadsheet ML, part of the OpenXML document standard. If you have not seen the earlier parts of this series, you may wish to view them at the links shown. There are no code examples in this screencast, but the information should be very useful for programming using OpenXML. In this part, I will show you how to work with charts in a spreadsheet. So let's get started. I'm going to create a simple chart from this data. I do it by going to insert and I'll do a line chart, just a regular line chart. And there it is. I can then save this. Let me move this over a little. I can save this. And then I'm going to open it using the Open XML package editor power tool for Visual Studio 2010. It's a very useful tool for viewing open XML documents since it shows you all the parts automatically in this nice hierarchy. So I'm going to step through how the chart is set up in the spreadsheet. I'm going to compare this. So this area over here where the chart is is a drawing. If we look in the sheet I can see the data here for all the different cells that are the source from my chart. And then at the very bottom there's a drawing, an explicit relationship to a drawing. That drawing appears here. And I'm just using Control ED to reformat this so it's easier to read. And, and what drawing mainly does is tell it where the chart appears. So we see we have a two cell anchor from column six, row zero to column 14. 15. So that's this column offset, no row offset, plus a little adjustment, and then the 14, 15 out here. So that's just telling it where the drawing lies. And then after that, there's this graphic frame, and the graphic frame uh, tells it how that fits within the drawing area and then most importantly we have the chart and the chart is also an explicit relationship to the other part here and the root of the chart is this chart space so that's the and then in here is all the definition of how the actual chart shows so that's the the pieces from the worksheet to a drawing to a chart. But the chart's the most interesting part of it because that's where all the visual of how that chart actually appears is defined, other than its location, of course. Now I'm going to look at how this is actually defined piece by piece. The most important part of charts, as you might imagine, are the points. And we can see the lines, there's four lines, and each one of those lines is made up of five points, one for each of these categories at the bottom. And we'll go through all the terminology that's used in the charting. So the lines are, each line is a series of points. Those points have a value and a category. Uh, if you're remembering your graphing from school, most of that was done with two values, an X and a Y, for example. Well, this is, even though the categories are values in a way, they're not continuous the way that kind of graphing would be. They're uh, distinct category values. So I'm going to show you how that's all represented in the XML. The chart space contains a chart. The chart contains a plot area. And then within the plot area, the line chart is defined. And this is the 
where most of the value part of the chart is actually defined. So we're going to expect to see four series. If I go back here, you can see I have four series, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And that's what this first series shows the text. TX is for the text of that series, which is the Q1. It tells it's where it also says where it's coming from, which is uh, A2, the cell A2. Then there's a category part, and there's my five categories and the source for those, B1 to F1. Then there's the values. Those are coming from B2 to F2, and those are the actual uh, values that are being plotted against that other axis. And then we have our next series. There's Q2, and the source of that is A3 instead of A2. And then the categories, there are five, the same five, and they have the same source. And then the values, and so on. There's Q3, and its values, and Q4. So that defines all my series. Then it also, at the very bottom here, shows two AX IDs. Those are the axis IDs. So we have two axes in this chart, one for the values and one for the categories. And so that's what we'll see now, is that we have a, a category axis, which is cat AX, and below that is a value axis, val AX. And then that's the in, end of the plot area. So that defines everything on this chart except for the legend. The legend is done right at the end here. It's not plotted, of course. It's a different kind of object, if you will. And uh, it just the position is defined that it's on the right side of the plot area. So that defines what's happening in the chart. It, even though there's a lot of little values, really, if you go through it, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, for example, I look at the text. It has a formula for the source, that's the F. It has a string cache. The cache contains the current value from that source. And that's the entire TX element, and so on. So it's really, even though there's a lot of little bits, that it's uh, not, it's pretty easy to read through. Now, one thing about charts is that they update pretty much the way formulas do. So if I go here and change this to 3000, for example, we'll watch over here, the Q1 line will drop onto the 3000 line. If I make the change myself, for example, going to the sheet, going to that same number, let's make it 6,000 this time, and save it. Then when I load it, you see it immediately comes up with the 6,000 showing in the chart, uh, just as a, that changed cell. The chart updates automatically. Uh, some things uh, need to be forced to reload or update, but not charts. Charts just do it whenever the spreadsheet loads. As you might imagine, there are a lot of options for charts. There's all sorts of fills and colors and uh, formatting. The, there's values on the axis, so you can change grid lines, you can format the axis with all, all sorts of options with uh, the units and ticks and all that stuff. Well, the, there's two ways always to figure out which, how to define these options in the XML. One is to go right into Excel, change the formatting, and then look at the XML to see how it turned out. Another way is to go to the standard for the open XML formats, and you can go right down in to the chart, for example, this is all within the uh, drawing ML 
part of the documentation. So I can go to the chart. I can see that a chart is a has a chart spaces and a parent. I can look at the plot area. I can find, let's say, a bar chart. And in my bar chart, not only do, see, do I see things like series, which are the very complex elements, but they're also uh, simple attributes like the bar type, which, I mean, the bar direction, which tells it which which way it goes, and then, and I can look at what those values are. Either it's going to be a bar or a column. So the bar charts do both bars and columns, even though they look they're completely separate choices in the Excel interface. So I can go and also look at things like cat axe and see in the category axis I can find things like the tick marks, the scaling, grid lines, all, all those options can be found within these other elements as well. I can go to here we go, legend. And I can find out, you know, what the op different options are on the legend. And I'm going to just pick one here. Here is the shape. And shape has gradient fills, pattern fills, all sorts of fills. So you can see it goes on and on. There's zillions of options within a graphical object like a chart, in addition to all the options on how you're going to draw it. I mean, there's like the 3D charts and, or 3D lines, I'm sorry, 3D lines and pie charts and it goes on, as I said, many, many choices. There's a pie chart and 3D even. Okay. And you can see what all those, you know, what all your chart choices are by going to this plot area and you can see area charts, bar charts, bubble charts, donut charts, line pie, radar, scatter. I'm not going to go through all these, but you get the idea, I think, that it's you know, all the options are there if you want to look through it or, as I said, just go to the Excel interface. You can, say, change your bar type to that type and then see how it comes out in the XML. I am going to show a few variations though. First, here's an example of having two charts on one sheet. So I will open that up. I'm going to close this other one so it doesn't in confuse us. Let's see how that looks. And I just go to my sheet, and I'm going to see what two drawings? No, still one drawing because the drawing part has two drawings in it. There's chart number one with the RID one, and then we have a second chart or a second drawing area with a chart ID RID two. And I can then find these charts in the chart part, chart parts there. So uh, I'm not going to show the specific charts, but I just show that that, it, that there's a single drawing part where the uh, this two cell anchor part of the drawing is repeated in order to def define both of those. And then also there's the pivot chart. This chart is based off a pivot table, so it has a different source. You can see it's got some complexity to it that allow that we can do because we have a pivot table source.
Oops. Right here. Let's look directly at the chart. Right, so right at the top, it says it has a pivot source and defines which pivot table it's coming from. And then if I go down into uh, the right, right at the beginning here, also there's these pivot formats. And that's just picking up what parts of the pivot table are used. And then our formulas in here for the bar are using pivot formulas, referring to that pivot table. But otherwise, after that, it looks pretty much the same all the way through here. You have the same category and value axes uh, and this different series. One thing about these series I'm going to show you a, a, a comparison on one of the other others. The, notice the string reference. Its value is 210Q4, even though it's coming from two, two or three cells. In contrast, I was going to show... In contrast, let's look at this one. This one has an actual multi-level category. I'll show you that. Because that is another option for the category descriptions. Here, we have the category. It has a multi-level string reference. And then the whole category is coming from a larger range of cells from A2 to B7. That's actually two columns. And the first level has the Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, then Q1, Q2 again. And then the next level up has the repeating year 2010 for the first four quarters, and then the 2011 repeated for the last two. And so that multi-level uh, description or of categories is also available. That is pretty much, I think, all the, the entire framework you would need to understand, modify, and generate charts. It's a lot of elements, but especially in a program, it would be pretty easy to just cycle through the source data and create all these elements. Certainly it would take some work, but it's, it's really pretty straightforward. I believe this will be the last, the final part of the series on Spreadsheet ML. I have covered all the major areas that I can think of, but if you have any to suggest, then just post comment on my blog with the screencast and I will see if there's interest in other areas. So until next time.